Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Can you see me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Yes, they just told us. Okay, so thank you everyone for being here. Um, I will quickly introduce everyone um, first the foundation. So Fondación Talí is a multi multidisciplinary art foundation based in Brussels, funded by Nathalie Guillon in 2014. The foundation aims to create bridges between visual arts and contemporary social issues through a program of exhibitions, monthly talks, and artist residencies. The program has three objectives connected to each other, promoting the work of women artists, highlighting arts and crafts, in the contemporary creation and discussing ecological issues through artistic, artistic perspectives. Um, on the occasion of the exhibition, The Sours, which presents 26 artists and takes the form of a dialogue between clay and thread, we are presenting the work of Hector Zamora that is shown in the exhibition, uh, the video of the performance Movimientos Emisores de Existencia 2019 that was shown at Fundación Otazu, Otazu, Spain. Um, so Hector, hi, I'm gonna introduce you also. Um, Hector Zamora is a Mexican artist. His work transcends the conventional exhibition space, reinventing it, redefining it, generating friction between the common roles of public and private, exterior and interior, organic and geometric. Uh, real and imaginary from his technical expertise and knowledge of high lightweight architecture and a meticulous emphasis on the process of conceptualization and construction of each piece. Zamora implicates the viewer's participation and requires them to question the everyday uses of material and the functions of space. Um, so now we're gonna talk, we are gonna talk and present the work of Hector and um, Hector, I leave you to talk us about this. Movimientos Emisores de Existencia. Okay, well, hello to everyone. Uh, well, uh, as you know, my name is Hector Zamora. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Tali Foundation for the invitation to, to this talk. And thank you also to Sofia to, to join me to, to this conversation. And well, um, used to to start to talk about the artwork that is now in the collection of the Tali Foundation, that is Movimientos Emisores de Existencia. Uh, this artwork uh, starts with, uh, with a very iconic image that for a very long time was something that was interesting me to, to research. That is the this classic uh, uh, image of the human that is carrying a pot of clay uh, on her head and <clears throat> then I was reflecting about the symbolism behind that uh, that image and it's interesting because we know that uh, that come from from the Greek culture Romans and from almost all over the world that is a, a very simple way to to uh, well, to like to idealize the image of the woman and and, and her labor, and this is interesting because normally when you see these uh, images, the women are uh, happy, are like uh, relaxed, and they are carrying these spots. But when you go a little bit uh, deep in the in the in the, uh, behind the the first image that you have of these of these symbols, you can find that the woman at the end is carrying maybe twenty or thirty liters of water inside of these uh, pots. Uh, it's a very heavy uh, 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 task that they they used to do from the rivers or from from the place where they can get the water to their places. And at the end, I think it's also an image that can have a lot of connections about uh, what is the woman's position in the society, in, in, in the history and in the, in the contemporary times. 
reflecting a little bit about the symbolism of these pots uh, could be something like the uterus where where they are carrying us and bringing us to to this world and it's uh, it's interesting how how is, uh, is this very simple um, image can have a lot of, of symbolisms for for uh, for the woman position in, in, in our culture and society. Then, well, reflecting about that, uh, working uh, a lot with uh, a friend of mine, curator, um, Paola Santoscoy, we were thinking in how to, to approach to that uh, symbol to, to, to try to create some kind of, of reflections about that. And then, well, uh, probably some of you have some uh, uh, connection with my work with my previous projects. And I used to work a lot with uh, terracotta, in with clay, with all these uh, different different ways that you have uh, in culture to use this material. And then, well, I decide to to change the position of these spots bring them to to the floor instead to, on the head of the woman and then keep them uh, fresh to have the possibility to to transform them uh, using the fits of the women that are participating in the performance and creating this uh, like a very strong um, uh, uh, performance where where uh, a group of around one 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 thousand pieces of clay are being uh, smashed and and deformed by by the feet of the women in a kind of a protest action and and well then from 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 this uh, very simple gesture because at the end is we are working with a very basic materials and, the, and a very uh, simple behavior. Uh, you can get a lot of, of, uh, of fresh and new uh, uh, yeah, reflections that can uh, touch the, the idea of, of this symbol about the, the labor of the woman and the position of the woman in our society. Uh, I think that's something that is interesting about uh, this uh, relation about carry things. Uh, I always remember the image of the Atlas, the, that is uh, this man that is uh, uh, carrying the, the world in, in its uh, uh, shoulders. And the images that we, we used to see when we uh, see representations of Atlas is someone that is really suffering, carrying this heavy thing. Uh, in his shoulders, and then when when we see the the, the image of the woman carrying the pots uh, on their heads, it's uh, radically different. That the women are happy, are are also sensual, are like uh, this uh, really uh, idea image of the the woman is happy and not suffering. And then, well, you can yeah. have a lot of reflections about that. It's a very um, well contemporary, a present uh, uh, subject nowadays, and um, and it's interesting that you've been working on it and um, representing these women or the idea of these empowered women, no, uh, just smashing the 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 clays, the vessels that they were supposed to carry with so many weights on it. So it's very special and um, connecting with the other performance that you do, um, what, that you present um, this, this, this idea of the, or you question, not present question, the, the idea or the concept of the, women, of the role of women in work. Um, we're gonna, uh, I think, I don't, I'm not seeing the images, but um, we're gonna talk about this, uh, um, the, the, the performance you did in Dhaka, that's the same performance in a different context and uh, it's a different video, but we, we, we wanted to, to, to present it too because um, the idea that, that it changes 
in the context that it's being presented. It's also part of the of the performance on and that of that you want to talk about. Yes, I think it's it's very interesting because the the first uh, time that we showed this well, this performance was in Mexico City in 2019. It was the first uh, test and experiment, and was very interesting because uh, at that time I was working with in my own city with my own culture and checking the relationships between the the women that participate in the action that uh, also with the guys because this is also uh, an in interesting point that normally the people that works doing the the pots the potters are men and then it was interesting that we were having these two situations the men's doing the pots that was a very a difficult task because you have to make all this amount of pots and keep them uh, fresh uh, with the enough flexibility to be smashed by by the feet and then uh, the women are the ones that are doing this 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 let's say this destruction uh, of the of the work that was made by by the men and here of course in mexico we have a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of connotations very interesting from the local context then later uh, we did the action at otasu foundation there was interesting because uh, the, the women that were participating were part of the crew of the of the the staff of the of the foundation there were secretaries people from the cleaning uh, uh, staff uh, and it was very interesting that for that night and at that moment of the performance the women were uh, in the first step they were the protagonists of the action and their bosses were as a as a guest, as a public, as part of the public, then it was very interesting how they were with this power to to destroy it in front of everyone and and to reflect about that. And finally, at the beginning of 2020, I got the invitation from 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 DACA Art Summit to present this, the performance and in in a, probably the more symbolic. Uh, um, context where this performance was uh, produced until today, that is Dhaka in Bangladesh, uh, where the society and the culture has a very extreme uh, position for the woman. The woman is really in the lower uh, part of the society. And then to, to encourage uh, people to participate was already uh, a big, uh, uh, challenge because uh, the idea that a woman will be doing something in in public and and also i remember from the clothes we were checking uh, what kind of clothes could be used in in dhaka because they cannot show some part of the body uh, uh, then of course some some uh, some of them uh, were from the muslim uh, religion well all these different things start to be a part of the action and then when the girls uh, decide and accept the to participate was very interesting because at the end i i used to explain uh, in a very simple way the the action and also the meaning of the thing that they will do because i am not working with professional performers is uh, normally is an open call to people that could be close to like you know that's a part of the staff it's, it's a, a regular let's say in a way regular people that is participating and then how they they really uh, took the the performance in their hands in the feet in their mind and they were really in a, in a very strong and symbolic action i remember that my skin and I saw many people around me. We were really moved by the by the strong uh, action that the, uh, these uh, girls from Dhaka were doing. And for me, it was like in the moment that the action got the most strong uh, power about what uh, was the, the the symbolism and the connotation behind the, the performance. And also, it's very interesting that later you get the feedback from 
from from the girls that were participating and they were really really proud and very very happy and with a lot of adrenaline uh, about how the action was uh, uh, giving to them the permission to do something that normally is not allowed for the women yeah. in in that culture mm -hmm. yeah and in that in well continuing and in that like i can um reviewing your 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 performances, um, that's um, a subject that you use, usually work on, the idea of uh, invisibilizing the women in, in, the role, in, in their work, in the role of work. And so um, um, we will talk about Memorandum, that was a performance you did in, in Southern Chopo in Mexico City in 2017, that were these um, women sec secretaries, right, that were, um, uh, writing in the on yeah, the, the writers they were writing their their stories right their life stories mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yeah well the uh, memorandum is uh, again is uh, this project is is uh, reflecting about the the women labor position in the society this uh, that in memorandum i decide to or specifically with the figure of the secretary in the roles of the big institutions, uh, public, private institution, you have always that that uh, uh, <clears throat> that uh, persons that are doing that work, and that is normally the people that is taking care of everything that is uh, is uh, being developed by the boss by the people that is working in, in that institutions. Um, normally is is, uh, is is a woman that is doing that. Um, and one of the main tasks that they have to do is to write, and now it's in computer, but they have to write all the documents that need to be, as a memorandum uh, document, have to be uh, spread in the institution or sent to other places. Then, well, I decided to create this structure with uh, scaffoldings. That was a, a natural response to the space at the at the Chopo Museum here in Mexico. That was a very it's a very specific uh, space for for contemporary art, and it's it's very challenging a lot because it's a very high and, and with these very big uh, walls and dimensions. Then I decided to create this like a like a scenario with all these uh, scaffolding structures and create the space for forty eight. Uh, typewriters uh, machines and then uh, 48 uh, women that were professional in that. And the action start when they go up to this structure and then they take their places and they start to write uh, a part of their life, uh, like a little biography, uh, including in this memorandum uh, format, that is a regular format for for public institutions in Mexico, and the one of the key parts of this uh, action is that all the the uh, great machines are without the the ink. Then they they are writing, but there's nothing uh, that is being uh, print on the on the papers, and. Um, the only thing that you get is like a stamp uh, from from the words uh, from the letters that is you know a uh, typewriter machine even if you don't have the the ink you can mark the 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 paper and then they were uh, throwing the the papers to the floor and well you can understand all the meaning uh, and all the uh, connotations and symbolism that this action to have and get the different kind of uh, to read uh, this performance where these women are writing but it's not ink include the, the papers are going uh, down uh, almost uh, um, white in the same way like before but then the people who, that was part of the public when they were downstairs some people was trying to to understand what uh, was the 
the words that were uh, printed on the paper, but then they found that if they were checking through the lights uh, and they got some of the details of the of the paragraph that the 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 women were writing, and well, this is also something that uh, have some connection with my, with my own life. My my mother was a secretary in a public institution during uh, all her labor life and was something that was also for me very um, common in my life to see the position of my mother and how how was the relationship with the with the office and with the boss and how was the relationship of the woman that is working for for an institution and yeah we also was very interesting the song this is also something that we we didn't talk about that in movimientos emisores de existencia the song when when the pieces are are in smash by the women is is beautiful and it was something that was not uh, i was not really aware about that okay and was beautiful because it was like kind of, kind of explosions here was was more like a cacophony of all the these typewriters machines working at the same time and yeah uh, the image of all these women doing that at the same time was very strong was uh, really like a kafkian image of of the of the uh, government machine doing something yeah but well there uh, you can have many different kind of reflections and Maybe um, maybe we can see some uh, extract of the of the video. Of... Yeah, it will be great if we can show both to also to hear the uh, song. Hear the uh, sound because it's even if it's like just a short part, it will be beautiful to to get the the idea of how how was uh, you know at least. Yeah. In, so it's super powerful to see this this performance where you change the equation where um, the women that were supposed to carry in their heads these vessels now they are just stepping smashing them kind of empower um, action for them. Yeah, no, yeah, and uh, uh, it's also interesting that was I start to work with uh, with. Uh, terracotta materials but more in connected with construction and here is the first time that I I decide to use uh, the material fresh and also with uh, different uh, roller in the material that is these spots that normally are used to carry water mm -hmm. I don't know if we can hear something but yeah I, don't, I can hear it but maybe for the public is possible, but if not later, it's possible yeah. to check on, yeah. on my website. It's also to the exhibition, the ones in Brussels. Exactly, <laughs> much better. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can put an extract of memorandum just to do the comparison the boy the sound and in like in um the like in the mech, like every uh, every uh, performance from you like really um has an exchange with the context where it's presented right as we were talking at bangladesh or at otatsu and um, in this occasion in the memorandum in choco where um i don't like you were telling me yesterday about the, the that in Mexico the figure or the of the secretary is uh, very um, uh, seen from a very machist per perspective, right? Um, this like kind of invisible invisible work worker, and uh, and that has, at the same time has to be like a also a, like a sexual object because secretaries always have to be so sensual as the woman carrying the the vessels yes well it's all the, all the 
the, the different uh, uh, symbols that are behind this, uh, like, uh, let's say, regular uh, uh, work that normally is connected with, with women. But it's interesting as, as you are explaining how this is uh, uh, always connected with uh, with machism and with the position of the boss. Uh, it's always a, a man that is, and the woman, as you are telling now, have to be like like again with these images of the women's carrying pot. They are they are uh, represent as a, a sexy and sensual. Uh, um, uh, it's it's like a very uh, clear how how the our culture and society that is coming from from the western side is always putting the woman in that uh, position that comes like from a very machist uh, uh, point of view. Um, of course, that I start to work with this uh, performance. Uh, Aware, aware about all these issues, but it's something that is also uh, like my my research uh, drifts me to that uh, ideas. And also, when I got the invitations to to do the projects, this was part of the reaction that I got the the response to to the place where where I was planning to to present the artwork for the first time. It's interesting that the Chopo Museum is just almost in front of the pre-party uh, building, mm. the party that has during 100 years the the the, the government in my yeah. country. <laughs> then then was quite mm. symbolic to have this uh, this action just uh, almost in front of this of this. Uh, <clears throat> building and then but this is also as what you were explaining before all these kind of con connotation that have to be with the local context uh, many of my projects start as a site specific actions or or performance or installations and sometimes like in movimientos emisorios de existencia I got the invitation and the idea to repeat the the action makes sense because it's adding something new to the to the artwork. Some others are impossible, are, are like very very site specific and will be will be not the same if I repeat it. Probably I will create some kind of damage to my project if I try to do in in a new location where the context is radically different. Mm -hmm. So going back to, to, to Movimientos Emisores de Existencia um, and to your work in general, you always work with the, the material. It's a very, uh, like the main character in, um, in your work. And in the case of Movimientos was with the clay, the raw clay. And um, in your latest work and in uh, this, uh, the, next work that we will present that is in Constancia Material that was shown in Luciana Brito in Sao Paulo in 2012, um, where all these construction workers are filling all the gallery with bricks. And the brick is um, a very important in your, in your practice. And um, maybe you can tell us about that performance specifically and the brick also. Yeah, well, uh, I, when I moved to to Brazil in 2007, um, I had the possibility to to participate in a project, uh, architectural project, uh, for uh, to rebuild a, a, a house in next to Vermelho Gallery. And this was my first time that I was really uh, close to this kind of material, the bricks, the, the a regular construction. <clears throat> I am not an architect. I am. My, my studies are in graphic design and then the experience to have the possibility to design a house was amazing but some a, a very important part for me of that process was that I was very involved because I, I was not with the knowledge to 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 leave the things uh, to the engineer I was I, I was uh, very 
worry about the results. I was, uh, this brought me to be very close to the workers, to the bricklayers, to all the people that was involved in the construction. And I was almost every day there checking what was doing at the construction place. And then I saw how this material, the brick, that normally we relate uh, that bricks as, as something that is solid, that is flexible, that is used to build walls, and that's it. I saw how how the bricks layer were with a very very mm, smart ways uh, to to work. They were using the bricks in a very different. Uh, directions and they were breaking them to create like uh, the ex exactly shape to to be adapt to uh, one corner or how they were uh, um, finding a, 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 a this really smart solution to bring the, the bricks to the first floor uh, throwing them and this is something that is you can see almost everywhere in the world, in Mexico, in Spain, in, in yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a, the way that you can use to facilitate a task that you have to do when you are working. And then when Luciana Brito invited me to do something in, in her gallery, she, she challenged me to, to make something to, to talk about the architecture of, of the gallery. And then I found that through this kind of choreography, uh, putting these piles of bricks in a very specific places in the gallery, you can see the mezzanine, you have corridors, you have two ways to go out. Uh, I create a loop that was without uh, a clear end or start point. It was used a group of piles. And <clears throat> And then 20 uh, brick layers that were uh, doing a simple task to throw and catch uh, and catch the, the bricks. And this was a, a very interesting uh, action because uh, again, in the, the, the people that was in the first uh, place were the brick layers that normally are not there in the gallery it is normally the people that is invisible the architect is the only one that get the the <clears throat> all the all the um, how you say the yeah the, when you are doing arch architecture the only guy that get the rights yeah, of that the, is the architect is, is the, of construction uh, uh, exactly not, not the brick layers and at the end the brick layers uh, are the ones that are really building mm, everything, uh, the houses, uh, well, our cities are, are made by them. Yeah. Uh, this was a kind of homage to them in this action. Mm -hmm. Thinking of the idea, like as we were recently talking, um, the invisibilized, marginalized uh, work of the secretaries that in this case will be um, again, one a theme in your work through this um, construction workers that finally are the one doing the job and the idea of them working collectively in the gallery, you know, and that you told me that there was kind of, um, they were having fun, they were just like the, the music and so finally it started like being something um, more uh, comfortable. Yes, I think that at the beginning for them was not comfortable at all because they were with public in this white place, uh, nothing to be with the, with the constructions, places where they normally are. But uh, later, uh, as soon they start to, to, to talk between them, to create this uh, uh, communication and relax and to see that the people were enjoying to see what they normally uh, do, but with this different uh, situation, uh, they start to be really, really natural. And they were incorporating a lot of local uh, uh, cultural symbols in their songs, in their, they were singing, they were shouting, they were saying many things about football, about women, about like, a, a, a normal construction place um, 
this was very interesting because I was not aware of all the things that they were uh, saying and singing. And then later I saw how many people at that time in, in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, were really moved by the action, not only for this very powerful and, uh, and, <clears throat> and full of life action, was also about what the bricklayers were saying that was also connected with some uh, uh, soap, uh, TV soaps okay, that were connected with uh, slavery and things like that, that appearing really spontaneously without any previous uh, idea that that could happen during during the action. And this is also, I think, important. And you can see in, in the three uh, different examples that we saw until now that uh, even that uh, I, I am giving some kind of uh, instructions, very simple, at the end, uh, when the women are smashing the pots, when when the bricklayers are are throwing and catching the the um, the brick the bricks, they are the ones that are uh, taking the the performance in their hands. I, I don't have any control about that. If they decide something different, if they go faster or slow or if, if they like to continue smashing until seven, 10 minutes later after the time that all the other women finish, they are totally free to, to do that. And I think this is also uh, a very important characteristic of my work that uh, normally where the, this, I am working with actions, the, the performance are the ones that decide how the how the action will be at the end. Also, there's the interaction with the public. That's that's also very important in your work, right? Um, how yes, yes. Modifies um, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of your performances. Yeah, um, it's the public who is also interacting. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, before we move to the, to other performance uh, to your work, um, I forgot to say before that anyone that has any questions, you can write it at the window of questions and answers, and then at the fin final of the at the end of the of the talk, we will uh, Hector will answer to you. Okay, so now. Um, as we were talking about the material and how material is imp it's, it's important in your work, um, I would like to talk about La Tista Tour that was your recent um, installation at the rooftop of the Met Museum in New York. Um, this was presented in 2020 um, between lockdowns and in the pandemia context. So um, maybe you can talk us about how uh, was the, the first concept of the work was presented and how it would change it because of the context um, it was presented at that time. Okay, well, this was, uh, of course, as you can imagine, the, the invitation to, to do the, the, the site-specific artwork for, for the, the commission for the uh, Roop Garden at the Metropolitan was, of course, uh, uh, a wonderful news when I got the invitation. And then when I was there in 2019, uh, to see for first time uh, with my eyes thinking and reflecting about that I have to do an artwork there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the first thing that uh, caught my attention was the view. I think, as you can see in this image, uh, one of the best views that you can get in Manhattan is, is from that from that roof garden. And then checking for the information and all the, yeah, the, the Metropolitan have all, all uh, uh, the information about the people that used to go there, the amount uh, was crazy. Uh, um, amount of information. Something that is uh, got my attention is that that space is the most diverse space of the metropolitan and the only one that is outdoor. 
um, diverse in the way that uh, people, uh, some some public go only for the for the view and to see the terrace. They don't go to to see the museum. They go yeah. straight. They pay their entrance and they go to the to the to the terrace. And then you have, of course, people that is uh, uh, visiting the museum and they go to see the view, to take a, a brief after going by hours inside of the museum. And of course, you have other people that go uh, uh, directly to, to see which is the new uh, commission that because this commission is, is changing every, every year. Um, in that direction, I, I, I was looking to do something to can connect with all this diversity of public that is normally visiting that space. And my first, my first reaction was to intervene the more important element that I, that I found that was the view. Then uh, the strategy to do that was to create a wall uh, to block the, the view. And in that uh, in that direction, and because I was working with this kind of bricks uh, uh, in previous projects, I decided that to use them as a as a filter uh, with this uh, semi-transparent situation where where you are blocking, but at the same time you are also changing the the way to to see through the through this. Uh, uh, layer of of, uh, of bricks, the the holes that the bricks uh, has are normally invisible because this is a regular brick that is used for construction, and normally those holes are not visible because are are put in in the other direction. And well, uh, originally I was planning to, to block completely the whole space, but the problem was that, as you can imagine, this space is fully regulated because it's considered as, as public space in New York and you have a lot of uh, rules that you have to follow. And this is interesting because in a more practical way, all those regulations that put a lot of pressure to create the, the, the artwork, were the ones that the, brought me to define the shape of the wall that is this curve that was the possible and the maximum uh, uh, size that I could find to create the wall on the on the terrace. The brick has, is, as you, sorry. No, I was going to <laughs> I was going to say oh, that the bricks were brought brought from Mexico. Right, they they came from from the north of Mexico, from Monterrey, and this was also quite symbolic because at that time uh, and before the the pandemic and the lockdown um, was the the closest uh, big event in in the united states was the elections where donald trump was trying to be reelected and as everyone knows uh, he was one of his big style flags of uh, for the reelection and for uh, his policies was to to create a wall between wow. Mexico City, Mexico, sorry, and and United States. Then the symbolism to bring these kind of bricks that also are not available in 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 New York. These kind of bricks are more only used from Mexico and to all Latin America. Then to bring them to to build the wall. Also, something interesting is that the bricklayers that were working to, to do the wall, uh, the most of them were from Mexico and Latin America, and this was not planned. This was something that is, is normal, that also was like showing us the reality of New York, that at the end, the bricklayers were, were not Americans. And well, of course, uh, the gesture to put this and then related with the pandemic in a moment when when the borders and the fragmentation of the society was 
uh, extremely forced to the extremes <laughs> because now, as we know, unfortunately, uh, another, uh, another uh, problem that we got from the pandemic is that is, the things are more divided than before. Yeah. And I think uh, the artwork was since the beginning reflecting about divisions, about uh, what is the meaning of uh, a world in, in the contemporary uh, mm -hmm. context, not only about art, about society, about the own, the, the city itself, because I was trying not just to keep the artwork inside of the of the limits of the terrace, but also talking with the city through this intervention to, to the view. And, and well, I think to have the both sides of the, of the wall, one side were like the outer side, the inside, the inside side of the wall, then the people to have the possibility to interact between the bricks and uh, cross, cross the, the hands and touch yeah. people from the other sides. Many of these very simple gestures that appear uh, as part of the interaction of the artwork with the public um, was very uh, symbolic for for the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so also one of, you, of your latest works that's presented now, it's ongoing at, um, in Belgium at the Triennale, it's a uh, strangler, um, that is this uh, scaffold in, I don't know how to say, like immersed in, the, in this pine tree, right? And okay. um, that talks about, well, also the, the, the notion of uh, construction that we've been already mentioned in, in before and, uh, and the, the, the connection with, uh, with nature, right? Um, you told me mm -hmm. that this pine tree is very special in Belgium. Um, maybe you can talk about uh, this idea. Yeah, well, uh, in 2019, uh, also I got the invitation to, to participate in the Bruce Triennial. Uh, they brought me there, uh, I think, uh, in November or something like that of 2019, when Pandewo was not always starting, but was not really uh, clear at that time. And <clears throat> when I was visiting the city, uh, the organizers brought me to different places looking for locations that probably could be uh, something that could uh, start some ideas for me. And then when we were uh, in this garden, uh, I found this tree that it was really, really uh, monumental. Uh, it's over 30 meters high. It's a very giant uh, natural structure. And yeah, I, I got my attention and I start to reflect so, from a previous ideas that I developed in 2005 for an intervention in the in the rainforest between Guatemala and Mexico, but at that time was impossible because it was really like a titanic idea to bring uh, scaffolding structures to the middle of the jungle. But then uh, uh, also uh, being aware about the, the title and the idea, the concept behind the, the triennial about trauma, um, then uh, the idea to make an intervention, uh, radical intervention to this tree, uh, like creating this kind of trauma, like a little bit uh, attacking uh, the tree, uh, grabbing the whole uh, uh, tree with this scaffolding structure, um, a very, very basic symbols. The tree, as, as we know, is like, uh, a universal symbol of life, of nature, um, and the scaffoldings, even that is not like the tree, but everyone can recognize that the scaffoldings means construction, okay. means uh, progress, means uh, urbanization, means, yeah. means uh, uh, something that is human. Then to create uh, a, a more strong, uh, 
clash uh, between the two structures. I decide to to put the scaffoldings in this uh, red color. That is a color that is used to to in in the public space to to find places yeah. that are dangerous. Mm -hmm. And then uh, working with a very professional team of engineers, we were developing the the, the scaffolding structure as close as possible to the tree, really grabbing the tree, but uh, at the same time taking care because was not allowed to touch the tree. And this was uh, a great experience because as you can see in the images, the, the two structures are really, really uh, 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 mix it mm. and and something interesting is when you see the the artwork from outside as i was explaining you can feel a little bit like this this is really like strangulation the tree is really like it's suffocating uh, you can be also a little bit like moving the bad way like what is this, what these guys are doing to this tree this is interesting to say that the title strangle i took from from a tropical tree that had that name. Uh, that is a tree that used to grow around the, another tree. And when that tree is really grabbing the tree, when, when the, the strangled tree go, uh, arrive at the top of the other tree, uh, make a, a shadow for the original tree until kill the the original tree and only stay in the strangler. It's a very crazy but natural behavior from, from one tree. And I was a little bit like uh, doing an analogy of that with this structure. And finally, something that is like changing that, uh, that uh, first uh, point of view, this first approach of this uh, uh, suffocation or or attack to the tree when you have the possibility to go upstairs by the stairs cases uh, until the top of the tree and you are going in around uh, like in uh, is uh, how you say when you go like this is <laughs> like uh, a spiral yeah <clears throat> You, you establish a, a new and a very interesting and deep uh, relation with the tree, with the scale of the tree. And in a way, as some people say, in a moment, you feel that you are like a bear because you have the right to be in places that normally you will be not uh, possible to reach. And how the relationship of this massive structure that looks like a cophony of, of pipes, red pipes going to everywhere and changing dramatically how you see the interaction between the tree and the and the scaffoldings uh, change dramatically the the perception of the artwork and I believe that in that way you you get uh, a new position about the the tree and also about the the interesting way of how we can create something and build something no it's interesting yeah. to say that at the end all the scaffoldings are are the construction is made by hand yeah it's people that is doing this it's not a machine and the experience with the five uh, guys that were doing the construction was amazing because they were also happy to to be part of it. this was like a performance because they normally make this for buildings but this time when they were doing this crazy thing uh, like uh, uh, climbing a tree and like uh, doing a, a little a little no a big house but actually, actually nature was playing with you at that time because when you were when you were constructing and painting you had a lot of problems to to Yes, the, the, the weather, well, uh, as you know, in Belgium, the weather is not the best. <laughs> and, and then we got some rainy days, very strong, and the paint of, on the scaffolding was not totally wet, uh, dry. And then we, we have to stop because the, 
the scaffolding was peeling by by yeah. the water and it was a very very uh, extreme situation and also the regulation the, i remember that people has to go there and check that was totally safe to, for the public and they asked yeah. also for some change and, for the tree. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the weather no you know that is close when the weather is yeah, I made that I made that connection because it was kind of um, of uh, nature just defending the tree from being strangled. And um, <laughs> as I was telling you yesterday, also when I got when I saw on the website um, of the triennial, uh, it said um, that if depending of the weather, people will will get into the scaffold or not. So finally, um, the 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 message was that nature will win. I hope. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's, um, we are on time, I think everything is fine. So if there's any questions, I don't know, like we can see them or, no. Hello. No, nothing. <laughs> I think there's, okay, so, I don't know where to see them. I can see them there. Okay, so anyone has any question for Hector? Maybe not, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's something you would like to add to, to, yeah, to well, the presentation? I, I think that uh, I will. I will like to say that I like to invite you to to visit uh, the exhibition to see the the video from Movimientos Emisores de Existencia because I believe that the experience to to see the video in high quality and with the with the sound is is amazing and it's a way to be close to the to the original performance and also invite uh, to everyone to to visit Strangler because this is the last weeks that will be uh, open to because uh, the biennial, the triennial go until the 20, 24 of October. Then, yeah, I think it's, it's not far from people that are in, in Brussels yeah, to go there. And also it's another very interesting artworks at the triennial that I think is a good, a good, uh, good option to enjoy uh, contemporary art in outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. There's one question. Mm -hmm. You can see it at the... Okay, so hello Sofia and Hector. I'm super happy to see you. Thank you for this amazing work. I have a question in this works. There's a lot of references to construction. How did you get interested in this? How did it come? Was it natural, something related with the city? Thanks, Ivan Agote. <laughs> Questions? Okay, well, I think that uh, construction is something that is uh, start with me in uh, very early when I was uh, in the university, I was very interested in architecture. Architecture for me was uh, quite important in, in my studies and information. And later, as I was explaining with my experience in, in Sao Paulo next to Vermelho Gallery, uh, the interaction, the direct interaction with the, with the people that is doing the construction was something that was very important, got to my attention. And also when I did Paracaidista in 2004, that I was involving in a very big group of people that was helping me to build the house in the facade of the Carrillo Hill. Uh, the experience to, to be used next to the people that is uh, working in construction, um, yeah, got my attention. And it's interesting because at that time, that, that uh, people that was doing the artworks with me was, uh, uh, in the in the making of, and 
then through that experience and through my interest to be more connected with the process of the people that is really building the things with their hands with in a physical way <clears throat> i this drift me to 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 the point that they got uh, the first uh, and the main part of, of my artworks in these actions, like uh, like the performance and action that I am doing, where now the process is not uh, the previous part of the artwork, it's already the, the artwork is itself. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I have a question also. <laughs> yeah, um, so, um, as we were talking before, there's like we can like see these materials that are repeatedly and has also to do with the question that Ivan asked about construction and um, why do you choose those materials? Since like the clay, the brick specifically, are there a relation like between them or with you? Yeah, I think it depends a lot of the context. I think for me, the brick is a, is a very simple and symbolic unit because it's when a brick is something that is universal. I think in every culture around the world can can recognize a brick. At the end, it's, it's a very important part of our culture. It's, a, it's an artificial stone. Uh, that brought us to the possibility to create our world. Then to use it is uh, is, is is very important because open a lot to, as I was explaining for the uh, Latch the Tour project, the brick is something that everyone can recognize. Uh, it's easy to talk. It's it's, it's like uh, looking for to have a very plural language that can be decodified by everyone, not just for a specific group of, of uh, professional people connected with art. I think as you can see, the materials that I use to, to sh choose for my projects are, are simple, are, are very important symbols of the daily life. Then when you make these uh, mixtures like scaffoldings and tree, uh, secretaries and scaffoldings, uh, uh, bricks and brick layers, these two or three elements that I combine, uh, they, then you have these explosions of possible uh, reads and connotations in the local context. Uh, why, I, I believe that for me it's quite important to always create a, a very open uh, language and dialogue with the general public for uh, for that reason i the most of my work used to to be connected with public space and it's not about because i am doing public art it's more about that i am more interesting to to talk with a big audience and uh, that uh, is not really connected with art Mm. Because I believe that sometimes you can get much interesting uh, response from from a uh, public that is not yeah. looking for art than the public that is already prepared and come with uh, knowledge about how to enter in in contact with art. For example, like in that is the tour that you were saying that most of the people there go to see the view. Of the rooftop. Exactly. So did you have any like like any specific case of people telling like why this wall doesn't let us see? Oh well, I, I got a lot of very interesting reflection, and I remember one when I was there because I was only a few times for the pandemic, and was a, a mother with uh, with her daughter, and they were. Uh, Migrants and they from from Mexico. I don't remember exactly from which region, and and the daughter was trying to be an artist and and 
they I explained to them about the, because they were talking ah this is about the wall that this fucking guy like to build between Mexico and United States and he's talking about all the problematic that we have when we come from Mexico to to work in United States but also my daughter to like to be an artist and to see that you are a Mexican and you you are doing this wall and with this brick with very, very simple materials and and you hear was very interesting how how was the reaction of of them and they were only there to see the wall no, they were not uh, for the museum for the museum mm -hmm. interesting okay well they're telling us that we have to no, end the conversation so mm -hmm. Hector thanks thanks a lot it was super interesting thanks Anissa and uh, Natalie Dio the curators of the show and Anissa especially for inviting me to participate um, you can still go to see uh, uh, the sours at the Fundacion uh, Tali in Brussels and um, well bye I guess yeah well, thank you very much, and yeah, hope to we will have the possibility to continue talking about. Of course. Gracias, Bye. Sofia. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Thank you to everyone in Tali Foundation. Ciao. Ciao.